Hey guys, welcome back to the VoIP guys on introducing Asterix. Uh, last time around, we registered our SIP uh, sub, uh, provider from Seattle into the Asterix system. And this time around, we are going to go a little bit further. So what are we going to do, with this? We first explain things which not worked in the last tutorial. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right at the end of the last <coughs> tutorial, it didn't show that it registered on the provider side mm -hmm. of the, the website. It took 30 seconds and we refreshed the website again and then it was registered. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, um, we will show you this again. Mm -hmm. um, please switch to ah, there we go. Mm -hmm. the screen. That's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we registered again. Zip show registry. You can see that we are still um, registered. And now we refreshed the website again. And now we can see we are registered. This is our external IP address. Mm -hmm. um, the port. Uh, when it's refreshed, and that our user agent is an asterisk PBX, mm -hmm. version 11. So that's it so far from um, mistakes out of the last <laughs> video. Um, we are registered now. Yeah. Um, the next thing we want to try is to see, I told you in one of the uh, videos before, that uh, the provider sends packets yeah. that the NAT Mm -hmm. um, is opened. Yes. So mm -hmm. we register, then the NAT table is filled with this information, yep. and then we get another uh, SIP packet again and again and again mm -hmm. that this connection stays open. Okay. And you can see them. Uh, I want to show this. You can say SIP debug, mm -hmm. SIP set debug. And then you could say peer, but we have no peer yet because mm -hmm. we did not configure one for now. Um, we say zip set debug, <coughs> and now we have to provide the IP address. So if you have no peer, you can just type in the IP, mm -hmm. and even you can type in the DNS name. You don't have to figure out the IP. This is zip flow root.com. And now it enables automatically, there's a lookup mm -hmm. for the IP address and enables the zip debug. And now we just have to wait until something happens. Okay. And the something already happened. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see here, um, I just cancel the console because otherwise it will Keep doing happen it. again and again. Mm -hmm. um, okay, this was a re-register. This is not what I wanted to show. <laughs> um, so um, there is a counter. Mm -hmm. And it tells, um, I will re-register in, I don't know, 600 seconds, and then it does a re-register, because maybe your IP address updated or something okay. like this. Mm -hmm. So we have to wait again, mm -hmm. hopefully only for 30 seconds. <laughs> ah, now something ah, happened again. again. Mm -hmm. I stop the console. Um, then we scroll up a little bit. And then we get the following. Um, from the SIP provider, you can see uh, the direction, read from mm -hmm. the SIP uh, provider. We get something from ping at invalid. Uh -huh. So this is just a SIP package he sends to us. Um, and this is just to keep um, the NAT open. And then we answer, we don't know anything about ping. So <laughs> okay. that's everything. So we say not found. What do you want from us? Right. But that's enough mm -hmm. to keep uh, the connection, the NAT connection open. Just pretty clever. Really. That's clever, and many mm -hmm. people try to forward all the traffic from the firewall to um, the PBX system, yeah. and they open all the ports and all the stuff, and that's very dangerous sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so please consider that and yeah. mm -hmm. register. 99% of the SIP providers um, for end users, let's say, just want to. the register, mm -hmm. and then uh, this method to keep the NAT open. Okay. Next thing, um, now I could just show you, this is the right configuration for mm -hmm. um, our provider in this case. Yeah. But that's not helpful because, as I said, you will have a different provider for sure, of or course, yeah. in many cases a different mm -hmm. provider. So now I show you how, what would I do to mm -hmm. figure out how the provider works. Okay. And mm -hmm. how I should set up asterisk um, to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. The first thing, if I register to the server is, I just do an inbound call and see if it works. Okay. Um, it will not work, it will fail, but I get a lot of information out of your inbound call. 
So this is uh, the ping again. Mm -hmm. You can see James is trying to dial a number. <laughs> uh, yeah, hang on. Let me just get the cool logs. We, we tried it earlier, so let's have a quick look. So let's have a quick dial here and dial. Put it onto speakerphone so you can hear it. And then change back to here. This is German. It means this is not a valid extension. Yeah. You can hang up. <laughs> Let's see what happened on the asterisk side. Um, here it starts. We get an invite um, from, this is the James, no, this is what you called, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. to, this is what you called, this is the number we registered at the SIP provider. Exactly, yeah. From, this is your German mm -hmm mobile number. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can call James if you want to and buy a Moby Dick if you like. Yes, you can do that, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> if not, don't call him. So let's see what happened. Uh, they're talking about Codex. We all uh, talked about that and what is an invite and mm -hmm. stuff like this. And here comes the interesting information. Call from, I don't know, to extension. This is the extension which we dialed from outside, mm -hmm. was rejected because we could not find a context called public. Uh -huh. And that's something I want to explain. Yeah. Um, normally, you define a peer, mm -hmm. and then you say, if somebody calls that peer, my provider, yeah. then you have to jump into context my provider, and then I handle the calls inside there. Yeah. We have no peer, so what happens? Asterisk wants to call the public context. Okay. So if you want to be reachable for everybody from outside, from any IP address, then you can fill in something with, into the public um, okay. context if you want to. Mm -hmm. I think you shouldn't, maybe only for emergency numbers or something like this, there mm -hmm. could be some special um, behavior when you need a public uh, context, mm -hmm. but I think you should not do it. So we reject the call. Right. But what I told you at the beginning of the video, we have more information now. Mm -hmm. We know that the register works, the provider knows our IP address. Yeah. We know the NIT is open yeah. and we can receive the call. Mm -hmm. We know the number and the format from the from and to header. We course, know how right. the provider sends your mobile number to us. We mm -hmm. know how the provider sends the destination number to us. Yeah. So for our routing in future, we can rely on that information. We know that mm -hmm. already. Yeah. So this is the useful information mm -hmm. um, that you can um, get out of this simple test. Uh -huh. And the next thing we can do is now create a peer, create the own context for the provider mm -hmm. and do the inbound routing. But if you switch back um, to the monitor, we can for sure see how they work, how they do the formatting. Mm -hmm. And um, that's useful information. We will um, just copy paste for the next step. That's quite a cool little trick to get all the information that we require. Yes. It takes no effort whatsoever. Yes. Cool. And you can see that the communications work. If mm -hmm. you do it the other way, way, way around, that your first call is an outbound call, mm -hmm. then you just send the zip packet to the provider, nothing happens, and then yeah, nothing happens. Yeah, and you don't so get... I think first register, then do an inbound call, then create the peer. Maybe someone has another opinion. This is wrong. You should start it the other way around. But in my experience, it's a good way to start. Yeah. So, well, if you do prefer the other way, let us know uh, in the comments. You know, don't below this video. Just uh, yeah. Um, and otherwise, uh, I think it's a pretty good top tip from you there. Yes. And I think that's pretty much time to end this one. What are we going to do next time? We will create the peer. We will try. To <laughs> we will try to create the peer. Okay. Good. <laughs> and place an inbound call and maybe <laughs> some phone rings. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Until next time. Thanks very much for watching. Until Bye. Then, goodbye. <laughs>